Hey, uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Faith Connection Live. This is episode 15. That means we've been doing it for 15 weeks. It doesn't sound like it's that much, but for me, that, that's a pretty, pretty good amazing. milestone. So soon we'll be like episode 100 or something like that. It'll be kind of neat. But thank you for tuning in. We're always so blessed to have you um, and just blessed to be able to do this. Um, we're, uh, as like I said, Faith Connection Live, uh, where we are dealing with real people, real life, real answers. I definitely... Beautiful. Oh, it was people life answers? All right, there we go. Um, tonight's episode is on expectation, and uh, there'll be a little couple subtopics of that, but uh, I'll pass it over to uh, Pastor Clint. Well, this subject comes from Beth. She, uh, from Sunday morning, whatever verse it was that, that um, I brought up in the message, it had the word expectation in it, and it kind of pricked her mind, and so she was kind of talking about that, and it got me thinking about because this is the Christmas season and, and you know, we have all kinds of different expectations. You can imagine every little kid, every little four-year-old or six-year-old or whatever, they have great expectations for Christmas and they're, you know, they're going to end up losing some sleep here in a few, in a few weeks. And so they have great expectation of what's happened. If, you know, we're, we are, uh, we have expectation of what people are going to get us for a gift. But then in the other way around, when we give gifts to people, we have an expectation of how they're going to receive it. Right. And, you know, we we just, you know, what's it going to be like when we visit the, the family for Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving for Christmas dinner? We already did Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is over. And it's always on a Thursday. I just found that out. Um, but, you know, we're <laughs> and Christmas is on the 25th. And. But we're, you know, just that expectation of what's the family dinner going to be like. Right. And is cousin or uncle so-and-so going to do something stupid again this year or, right. you know, whatever. And, you know, there's couples that, you know, are dating and maybe she has an expectation that maybe the question is going to get popped mm. during Christmas or whatever. You know, you just have all these crazy expectation this time of the year. So it got me thinking about about all that kind of stuff, and you know, why do we put so much pressure on ourselves that we expect of ourselves this time of the year that we've got to perform, we've got to have the house decorated just right, or we've got to, if we're the ones preparing the meal and everybody's coming to our house, then we have to have things just so, and we have to have the meal prepared right, or or if. And we put expectation on other people that they are going to perform and do things a certain way or, or whatever. And, and it just, it's a, it's a unique time of the year. I mean, the atmosphere changes all over the country in every town. You know, our, our ta little town, our little town here has gotten transformed with a big tree in front of the courthouse and the Christmas lights. And, you know, people are starting to put up their own Christmas lights at their homes and things. Well, so there's an expectation just in the mood that's all around yeah. too, because I got, I don't know, I've heard it before, but it's like if somebody is a little rude or even, even on like a one percent on mm -hmm. the normal, you know, it's the holiday season. I can't believe you're acting that way. Yeah. So there's an expectation just to be in a happier mood, a yes. generally better mood than normal, and that starts from I, I think the day after Thanksgiving. I mean, in a sense, maybe even beforehand with the Thanksgiving, Christmas, holiday season. Yeah. Um, there's that expectation. I just thought I'd yeah, interrupt. Just, I I felt like I didn't you, talk for three you minutes. You need to. And I needed to. <laughs> you can say anything you want at any time you want to say it because I need the help. Um, but the, you know, just that sense of expectation that either it's both ways. It's what we expect uh, from people and what we expect when we do something for them, what we expect their reaction to be to that. And it's, you know, it, it's kind of, we put so much crazy energy and, and thought and Just everything. giving, wrapping presents, the perfect yeah. bow, the wrapping. There is. I mean, every aspect of, of what we do around the season, in most cases, is heightened. Yeah. Like, you know, our, our, our giving expectation when you walk into a store and you got to ring and bell the Salvation Army. You know, like, there's everything is increased yeah. compared to the normal time of year. That is, That's I never really sure. thought of it that way. But the, the, so at, at this time of the year, being faith connection and, and all that, what do we expect of God at, at this time of the year? You know, or 
or just any time, not, not just at Christmas, but any time of the year. And, um, of course, i got to have a scripture for you. So, um, Psalms um, 145, is it 15 and 16, says, The eyes of all look expectantly to you. It's people expectantly, looking expectantly to God. And you give them their food in due season. You open, their, you open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. So we know that this is, that there's an expectation we have of God, that he's going to open his hand and give us what we have desire of and what we have need of, and he's going to provide that. And that is, and the reason we have that expectation or that we should have that expectation is because that's who he is. Right. That's who he has declared himself to be. I am the God that provides. I'm your provider. I'm the one that will take care of you emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, you know, in every in a, uh, relationships in every single way. And so to have that expectation of God that he is going to uh, uh, meet our needs or he's going to provide something for us is... Uh, how do I want to say this? It, it, it's I want to say required. Um, it's nece it's necessary. It's part of our relationship with Him. Right. That if we don't have an expectation of Him, if we just say, "Well, I'm a believer, but I don't want to put any expectation on God. I shouldn't expect Him to do anything for me or to do anything," that doesn't That's line not a relationship, up. Though. Yeah, it doesn't line up with the Word of God. If we don't do what He has. Uh, instructed and given us to do and he says this is what I want you to do I want you to expect me to be he's declared himself healer he has declared himself provider we should expect that then and because he has um, uh, performed that or done that decade century you know after century hundreds of years thousands of years he has been that to his people and then we should expect that from him but here's the other side. I was to say, there's a but, second. Now, oh, this is funny. Anthony, our camera guy, has come up with a subject for a future uh, episode, and that is the butts in the Bible. So be looking for that one. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, but but here's the other <laughs> side of this of this exploitation. <laughs> but why did you trade wreck that? Like, <laughs> I, where did you get that from? I don't know. But but um, what does God expect from us? Yeah. And so that's my question. We we get so wrapped up in what we expect, what we want, or what we need. Mostly it's what we need. Right. We, we get so focused on our need, and our need gets so huge, and the problem gets so big that we just need God to show up. We need a miracle. We need him to, to come in in a great way. And so, you know, that expectation of that, of, um, excuse me, somebody's knocking at the door, and it distracted me. Um, <laughs> anyhow... The, um, <laughs> that's weird. That is, that's a lie. That's like, what I'm happened there? Say, yeah. Anyhow, um, so we, we, you know, we always relate our relationship with God from the receiving side of it. But there's another side of that, and that is the giving side of how we give our, ourselves to him and we interact with him and have that relationship. So what is it that he expects from us, Dan? Um, I think... <laughs> No, just I'm just still from, thrown from, off by the knock on the door. Yeah. Now, just from, um, just from yourself, from I, in general. What would I you... would say the number one thing is for, for in from what I've learned, and I'm still a young Christian, so I'm sure there's more. Um, but I would say honoring Him, um, thanking Him, like showing respect where respect is due, in a sense. So whenever mm -hmm. something does come through, or whenever. You know, he uh, does do something in your life or just just in general, just every day being thankful to be part of his kingdom. To me, that's like number one. There's a word I'm trying. It's like a very popular word in the Bible. Mm -hmm. and I don't know what word I'm looking for, but that that would be my thing for expectation and um, salvation. I mean, that's a big one. I mm -hmm. mean, that's easily and freely given and we really don't have to. To, to do anything other than receive and, and accept him as our Lord and Savior. So, I mean, I think that's the easiest one for us to, it's, maybe it's hardest for us to accept, but the easiest one that's out there all the time. I guess everything's out there all the time. But yeah. I'd say salvation and being thankful and, and worshiping him, I guess, would be yeah. worship. I guess that was the word I was looking for, worship. 
The, the, I guess the, the thing that, that I was predominantly thinking about. Should have wrote it down. Like I should have wrote it down. <laughs> yeah, then you would have stolen it. <laughs> then you would have, yeah. <laughs> like, well, thanks, Dan. I had the same answer. No, the, uh, the thing that I'm, that I understand from the Word of God and also understand from my relationship with God over decades is that what He expects the most of me is that I trust Him, mm. that I have confidence in Him, that I, that I don't wonder, is He going to come through? I don't um, think, well, maybe if, but, you know, is God going to do it this time? It's always truth. Yeah. And there's no exceptions to that truth if you find it yep. in His Word. And that, yeah. say, oh, it's the always, and, always and, and, one but, up me. But it's like, you know, when you read it, I'm not trying that one up. No, you it's just, a good thing. I, I, I you kind know. of put you on the spot. So, you know, you weren't expecting that expectation. Um, yeah. But the, you know, when, when we, you know, what that all comes down to, our confidence of him, our trust of him, it comes down to faith. That's what faith is. It's confidence and trust. So his greatest desire is that we trust him, that we believe him, that we have our faith rested on him so when we see the promises in the word of god and we're studying them out and we see what god has declared his people to have and to do is that we take that and now hold on to that we don't uh just say well that was a lovely sermon that we heard this this week and that was a lovely verse that i just read and that's a nice thing no we take it and we apply it to our life we take confidence in that so that when i see in the word that he will provide healing for my body, that he'll take my sickness and disease and my pains, and then I can uh, have confidence in that, and I can trust that and rely right. on that. And so that's his greatest desire, is to be believed, is that when we read the Word of God and when he declares something, when he speaks it into our spirit man and into our heart, that we just believe him, that we trust him. And that, that's one thing I always stress on with, like, young Christians or new Christians, however you want to, like, test it out don't just don't just write it off because the world tells us so many different things and we did a sermon series you did a sermon series one time called the upside down kingdom and how most things that are in the bible about how god is it's a little upside down to the ways or earthly ways and that's one thing i always stress to people is to to get in the word read the word and and put it to test in your life I'm not testing god but testing the outcomes of your own faith testing mm -hmm. it, it like Making it work. Don't just write it off because it sounds a little crazy. Like I know the first time beyond, I, beyond reasonable what, normal, what you should be able things. to expect. Like you can yeah. expect a miracle for healing. Like that's such a big thing in our world. Mm -hmm. Like in this earthly world, that's huge. Yeah. But in the Bible, that's not that big of a deal. He does, it's he's done hundreds it from of Genesis times. to Revelation. You know he's what I mean? Like it's every, a very regular chapter. thing. That's like Oh, being saved, going to heaven. Like we, we done, that one's good. We have the expectation that if I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. And that one's easy to grasp. But then there's these other ones that, why is that more truthful than, so, you know, hey, if you're saved, you're going to heaven. But, oh, healing, there's all these, these touchy subjects where it's like we don't fully financial trust provision. and leave financial yeah. provision and, and stuff like that. And that's one thing I always stress to, to young Christians because I know it was very tough for me um, whenever I first started out was like, I don't know. This is crazy. Like I, he wants good things for me, and like, yeah, and I, yeah that's and probably we, the like God cares. Yeah. Well, when we have whether, expectations on ourselves, I feel like we are our own. Our own um, uh, we're, we nitpick ourselves more than anything. Sabotage. Where it's like, I, yeah, I, I don't deserve it. You are a child of God. Who else who, deserves yeah. it? Who, who you know, more deserves, who more deserves the goodness it. and the yeah. blessings of God we all sin. than a child? That's okay, you know. But yep. as a Christian, that's one thing I'm gonna I always try to stress too is it's a constant path. Like yeah. you can't be a Christian day one, be saved, and be like, you can, and you're a Christian. But biblically, there's a Christian path to to better yourself, to be more like Jesus, to walk in his image. That's a representation mm -hmm. of what we strive to be like. And that's what we should expect from ourselves is to better our path. And it may be a little bit, and you may stumble back, yep. but better at each time. Be aware of that and get in this and it'll help you immensely. Well, the, the one with all the areas that we've been talking, we've been hitting here mostly is healing and financial provision and you know those kind of very tangible, very earthly kind of human things is that our, um, our expectation, our understanding of that is like, well, 
I should be believing for, you know, double my income or these great big, big leaps. And it's like, no, if you've never believed for anything, believe for a new pair of socks, believe for $10, so believe for where you're at. If you're believing for healing, let's start with a headache. Right. And that's you not know? because God can't accomplish it. No, it's that's because our faith and our understanding of it and our strength that's inside of us yep. isn't that big. Yep. You know, grow to it. Yeah. And that's. We, we pray here, Faith Connection, all the time. Increase our capacity, our, our ability to receive what just God has no, for just us. Just our knowledge on yeah. it. Yeah, God has infinite things available to us, and we know about one little piece of it. That's right. And it's like he wants to get us the next little piece, and it's like, Lord, increase us, expand our ability, our our way, our, how we get that revelation into us, get that those blessings into us, you know, we well, just need that. Well, and I'm going to so, go off the rails a little bit that I'll probably get no. frowned upon. But, but really? like, there's been many times in history where, um, you know, scientists or inventors or something like that on opposite sides of the world have come up with the same idea. Oh, yeah. Or to better humanity, to better life, to come up with that invention. So, and I always look at it that well, way. Well, like, like any, any major thing, fl air flight electricity there's multiple they were all working on it all at the and same that, time within and it, years of each other and another know? cool thing with the awesomeness of youtube and facebook if you listen to other sermons and stuff throughout a month i always oh, yeah, break it down in a month you start seeing that they're not even connected like you'll, and you'll start seeing like oh wow there's a theme to all these different you know preachers and pastors that yeah. and it's like whoa that's even who's, even who's from, that? from different deno uh, not denominations but different streams different ways right. of thinking they might be totally opposite or totally right one might be a faith preacher one might be a healing preacher yeah. one might be a salvation preacher so yeah. they're on different spectrums but they're still in all the of same a sudden Bible, you'll get you know? we, we went through a season of grace that a couple of years ago that everybody just not connected just independently of each other was preaching messages yeah, and that's on small grace. church local church yeah. i do it with uh, oh, my yeah. wife's grandma all the time because she goes to a different church out in the sticks and uh We'll go up Sunday morning or after church, we'll go for lunch and we'll start talking about what we talked about here at Faith Connection. And it's all, a lot of the times they mm -hmm. coincide. It's not just like, oh, but we talked about God at church. Like, well, obviously, you know, <laughs> it's like specific grace, faith, you yeah. know, strength, expectation. There's these these key things. We're I'm off on a tangent. We are yep. ranting about Well, it. I would just want to challenge everybody. We're way over time. I just want to challenge you with it. What's your expectation? What are you expecting out of this Christmas season? What are you expecting from God? What is he expecting from you? And to explore that personally yourself and to have a, a uh, an expectation of, of what God is wanting to put into you, an expectation of trust in him that he will get that to you one way or another. He will work that out. Even if you don't understand it, even if you have no idea, you're like, there is impossible. There's no way God can do whatever, fill in the blank. And I know that he can. He has a million and one ways to get it done. And all he needs is one. And he'll take care of it. And he'll get it done for you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Put put those um, comments down below. If you're if you're listening to this, reading this, put it down below. Maybe you can share that with somebody else. And, and they can be uh, inspired to expect greater and bigger things in their life. Because yep. your expectation may be uh, small potatoes to me. Or vice versa. Or something. Yeah. Probably vice versa, I would say. But... Um, any, but I'm an eater, so potato. Anyway. Potatoes, yeah. Um, especially, anyways, can especially I? Especially baked in like that. No, double baked, I don't loaded. Like baked, oh, you know, mashed okay. potatoes. Well, yeah, mashed potatoes are oh. good, too. Anyways, um, hash browns. That's a good Ooh. You ever, How many things you can make I like with potatoes? Fries, you you can make so many things with oh, potatoes. Yeah. It's cool. Yep. Anyways. All right. Hey, guys, before we keep ranting on, but... Um, like I said at the beginning, we're blessed to have you. Blessed for having tuned in. We're on Facebook Live right now. Um, so if you uh, like, share, spread the word, we're also on YouTube. I'm pretty sure you can search Faith Connection or Faith Connection Clearfield, um, and, and you can line up with our YouTube. And this is our 15th episode, so the other 14 are on there. Um, so it, once again, just... And if you disagree or have a different thing or agree, put it that like comment with us so we can grow so we can grow together as the body of christ the church of christ read that that's a big revelation you'll have about the church that's the, the body the whole body of christ that's everybody it doesn't matter what building you're walking into you should have a building you're walking into but we can come together and, and unify mm -hmm. each other as the body of christ but as always good night god bless everybody see you next time